Good morning, all. Um, I appreciate uh, again the attendance of um, our of our team. We are delighted to have everyone participating, and uh, and and thank you. I have to remind everyone that this, uh, given that the unprecedented circumstances of the pandemic that we're dealing with, Governor Baker did issue some relief from the open meeting law, and we are taking advantage of that by conducting this meeting. Um, using collaborative, virtual collaborative technology, which we have appreciated from the get-go. Thank you to Katrina and team. Uh, today, we do have a quorum. I will establish that, uh, and then we'll go to our call to order. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? I'm here. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Commissioner, good morning. Commissioner Zuniga? Hi, good morning, everybody. And uh, Commissioner Stebbins? Here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. So all five are present. And we will call to order today's meeting. It's Wednesday, May 13th, 10 a.m. Conducting this virtually. And we will, oh, my. Hopefully the whole electricity won't go down here. Um, and we will uh, start with the approval of minutes. Uh, item number two, Commissioner Stebbins. Good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, in your packet that was distributed, you have the meeting minutes from the April 29th agenda setting meeting. Uh, I would move their approval subject to any corrections for typographical errors or any other non-material matters. Second. Any edits, questions? Okay. Hearing none. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Can I vote? Yes, 5-0, thank you. And thank you, Shara and Bruce, for that good work. And we'll now move on to number three, our agenda setting notes. Start with you, Karen. Good morning. Good morning, how are you today? Well, <laughs> thank you. We can really Nice to see a lot of faces here, thank yeah. you. So uh, item number one is the administrative update. We should keep that on uh, all of our agenda for the foreseeable future. So I would just keep that on for the 21st. For the 21st, and just a reminder, we do have a, a public meeting tomorrow with a limited agenda. So uh, you don't plan on having any other items tomorrow except for the, anything related to that limited subject matter. Correct. Okay, excellent. So. The next meeting will mark down for 521. All right, moving on to item number two, Todd, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, I don't, there are no regulations um, in the queue for the upcoming meeting, though I was just uh, reminded that we do have that matter involving the use of juvenile delinquency information that came up during the public hearing uh, as part of the sealing of records. So that might be something we consider putting on um, this queue just so we are able to keep track of it. Good, should we put it under review or do you think it, um, we have the uh, 521, which I probably wouldn't recommend at this point, but do you think it should go on for June 4th or do you think we should just put it under review for now? I think we can put it under review for now. It's just something I think we don't want to lose track of. So I think it would be nice to have it on the list. Great. Thank you. Moving on to item number three, Dr. Lightbound. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, if we can um, postpone this, maybe we'll just put it under review for now until we get things worked out more on this item. Okay, and this is the Finger Lakes matter. Yes, correct? this is the request by the Mass Thoroughbred Breeders to race their um, races in another jurisdiction in Finger Lakes. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to number four. Um, <clears throat> this is with res uh, respect to the independent monitor six month uh, baseline report and that has been submitted on time. Yeah, and uh, I would recommend that we move forward for a presentation from the independent monitor on on the 21st. Uh, Commissioner O'Brien, you want to have any thoughts on that? No, I think we're on track for the 21st. So I think it'll be a good day to do it. 
Right, and I think you know we should probably allow a, a, a good amount of time for that report. I don't know how long, but we might have a couple of items, other items for the 21st, but uh, again, virtual presentations are intense. So um, as we go through today's agenda setting, let's just think about how much we should add to that agenda. Commissioner Bryan, thanks. Yep. All righty, so we're all set for that. Number five, Commissioner Cameron and Commissioner O'Brien. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we as we spoke about uh, in the last agenda setting, we are prepared to move forward with this. It's been um, waiting pretty much for the appropriate time for the full commission to consider our recommendations and we're prepared to um, explain those um, recommendations. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if we should bump it out one more meeting given how lengthy the six month baseline is and the topics we're gonna to be talking about. Uh, it might just be better to go into fresh eyes maybe at the next meeting in May or first one in June on that. Yeah, if we think it's going to be that lengthy a, a presentation, I am certainly not opposed to that. Then it would move to June 4th. Commissioner Stebbins? Yeah, no, just a, a, a quick question. Uh, Commissioner O'Brien and Commissioner Cameron have been working on this. Um, are there staff that have been involved that might be able to give us uh, other commissioners two by twos or kind of updates as to the, the policy and the work that you've done? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, Tripti's please. been involved. Um, I know Carrie was, uh, I believe Elaine has some, there's definitely, yes. you worked a little with outside counsel as well, but there are a number of people on staff that could absolutely do that um, to make sure you have all the questions answered. Probably another reason to put it on June 4 to make sure right. um, everyone else has a chance to get their questions answered. Right. I agree. It's a good recommendation, Commissioner Stebbins, and we'll make those arrangements. That's excellent. And that gives you, um, I know the commissioners, you're going to be busy uh, reading for the, the 21st, the other report. So this way we will conduct just kind of two uh, big topics uh, over a little bit longer period. So thank you. We'll move with number five then to June 4th and then with the two by twos. Item number six, a lot of work's been going on. That's uh, right. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Uh, I, don't see, I don't see Mary, but Mary will chime in. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're good to go for this, uh, for the 21st. I'm working up the summary memo now that I'll have out, you know, the end of the week, uh, first thing on Monday for your packets. So we should be good to go. And that's an update as opposed to, there won't be any action needed by the commission. No, we're still in the process of doing our meetings with applicants. In fact, those will finish at the end of next week. So we're still in the process. Good. So that's our update. I think that makes sense for then uh, the, the 21st, we can accommodate yep. that. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a brief discussion. Keep that on for 21st then. Moving to item number seven, Commissioner Zuniga and um, Derek. I don't see Derek yet pop up, but Commissioner Zuniga? Uh, yeah, I, I think we should be uh, on track. Uh, I'll defer to Derek if there's any changes because he puts out uh, the memo, but um, we've reviewed the budget and are in the process of consulting with or getting feedback from licensees. So. The next meeting in June, the early meeting in June, should be we should be on track. Yeah, I see it as a dis, as a discussion mainly um, because we'll be meeting with we'll send out the um, the paperwork hopefully at the end of this week, beginning next week to the licensees. Have a meeting with them at the end of May, and then we can bring feedback from the meeting with the licensees uh, to the commission. But I don't think we'll have the whole package ready um, just because we're running two weeks behind. We were supposed to meet with the licensees this Friday. So maybe in that case, we should also put another item for the one on the 22nd. So keep these, keep, keep the seventh, uh, you know, the item seven. I think the next date is the 25th. Is that correct, Marianne? Or, or is it the 18th? The 18th would be the next one. You want us to reserve time on that or time on the 18th would be would be good because that'll give us time to um, sit down 
digest the information that the licensees um, gave us, have already have a little conversation with the commission about your feeling about some of their comments, because it's not a typical budget year. Um, let's, let's be honest, it's nowhere near a typical budget year. So having a chance to kind of get some um, direction from the commission on their thoughts of our preliminary budget would probably be helpful um, to shape that document that then we would bring to you on the 18th. So, so am, I, am I right that you'd, you'd want both dates, preliminary? And, okay. Yes. Yeah, the preliminary discussion, early June, and then the 18th with a vote. Uh, with a vote. If, it change, if it changes, but that would be our target. At this point. Okay, with the vote. Okay. Any questions uh, from anyone on that? Okay, great. I know you've been all working so so diligently. So it's, it's tough. Uh, thanks. Um, moving on to number eight, Jill. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so our <clears throat> sorry, our featured speaker. I don't know if this is too early to be discussing this, but um, she has some time constraints. Um, so I did want to mention and see if this would work. And um, she is available from 10 to 1030 or at noon, uh, but not in between there. So if um, not sure how long the meeting will be on June 4th, but would she be available if we to start from 1010 and then 10 1010 to 1030? Could make it if we would like before she moves back to California. Uh, I think it's an in, I think it's it's pertinent right now to have that update and yeah. and interesting. So let's see if um, we can continue for June fourth. If something changes further with her schedule, we'll plan on our June fourth starting at our typical ten a.m. Right? Great, Karen. I can see the nod, so that's I'm good. Nodding. Yep, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, that works. Great, just thank you so Mary, much. You'll, you'll note that, correct? Thanks, Miriam. Just have our external presenter kick it off. All right, thank okay. you. Thanks, Jill. Looking forward to that. Uh, number nine, uh, I think that I'm the lead on the date setting because <clears> my, my piece, so June 18th is a good target for me still. Just a reminder on ethics for everybody who needs to file SFI. Todd will, of course, <clears throat> Too, but you're getting a reminder um, in two weeks our SFI is due so uh, <clears throat> I'll, I like tax is always a fun thing yeah <laughs> okay um, number 10 now we've got our presentations so um, yeah I think we're on uh, we're on target for that right now um, you know we'll We'll have a better idea in a couple of weeks exactly where we stand once we're through our, through our process. But as of right now, I don't see any problem. Do, uh, do, you, do you know how much time you're going to need for that? Well, we have 37 applications in front of us. Mm. So, you know, it's lengthy. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past, I mean, the presentations are a couple of hours. And that was usually with maybe 20 to 24 applications. So I think that's why we broke it up into two days. We don't need to break it up into three days, correct? I was going to say that's a lot uh, for an HD meeting. <clears throat> um, well, we certainly may. I, I guess we'll have to play it by year a little bit. And, and what's your, what, what's your, <clears throat> and, end date in terms of when do you have to have everything resolved how late we do not have a particular deadline it's not we don't have a statutory deadline we try to have things done by the end of the fiscal year but just oh. as an example last year because we were opening encore at the end of june um, i don't think we finished up until almost the end of july last year so you know we have some flexibility if we need it Karen, are you okay with that? I am. All right, so we'll keep, um, so June 18th, we'll have 
the budget vote and then the beginning of the first round of community mitigation presentations. And you also have the ethics on, Madam Chair. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I might have to push that off. <laughs> <laughs> I see Eileen smiling. She understands. Yeah. Um, all right, then uh, let's keep that in mind because that's a lot of content for us to absorb, too. So we want to be sharp. Um, I don't think um, we'll do the ethics because that's that's going to be con there's actually maybe even a better form where we you know do do something a little bit different for the ethics thing anyway so uh, Marianne in terms of timing can you guess um, Derek and Joe what you would want for time at least on that that date 18th 18th that would be your first round and then Derek and Enrique your second round that's getting to be pretty substantive. But then I wonder if we could, if we should, should we do two different meetings for just community mitigation? Does that make sense? Kathy, I, mean, I think we discussed, I have down on the notes that June 25th is just community mitigation funds. But the 18th. It was a, it was a, special, meet, it was a special meeting that you were going to do just for, for the CMF. Oh, okay, so that's the 25th, one week later, but then the first round is number 10, Marianne? Right, so that's the first round is number 10, and then we were going to not skip a week and do the 25th and just do community mitigation. Oh, that was the suggestion. So yeah. we could do that, and then our heads would be in the same, in the, sort of in the close in time uh, for our decision making. So maybe the number for the first round, it might be shorter than the second round, Joe. Yeah, I was thinking that we could maybe do, you know, an hour on the first one and then a couple hours on the second one. Uh, maybe we pick some specific types of grants to do on the first day. Maybe we do the workforce grants uh, on one day and then we do, you know, the transportation and the other ones on another day. You know, we haven't sort of gotten down to that. But that, that, that's a good way to think about it because we'll have gone through the budget discussion first. Um, so. If, if there's certain ones that you can compartmentalize and maybe have a reduced schedule for the the um the 18th and thank you Marianne for the reminding me of the 25th and I'll talk with the team about it when we when we get together and see sort of what we think makes sense commissioner Stebbins and Zuniga what do you think you've been working so hard on this yeah no um Joe and I have had a chance to to chat briefly about the schedule um you know it's important to remind ourselves that there wasn't an application that came in that was an emergency or a pressing um, mitigation request. So, um, but happy to circle back with Joe and begin uh, how we might compartmentalize and move some of these through quicker. Um, some categories had lots of applications, some have limited number of applications. So we might be able to just breeze through some of these um, in a compartmentalized way. Yeah, the, the, the challenge here is not a surprising one. And that is that, uh, you know, this mitigation fund is funded for this year, but and there's an oversubscription of grant requests from what we put out in the guidelines. Um, it's the following year that that is now because of the decrease in revenues uh, projected to be less. Anyway, the point is that we, we, we have to have a good discussion like in pre prior years on the merits of each of the grant applications, but then a global outlook of what this um, year with its you know intricacies means for that fund. So can I ask one other question? Does it make sense to start on the 25th rather than on the 18th? Or do you think we can do both? Start on the 18th? Yeah, it's, it's, it's up to the team. I mean, I guess we have not yet, we've, we've had the, all of the, most of, if not all, Joe, uh, you, you uh, correct me, um, of the conversations with the grant, uh, with the cities and towns. Um, we have not, convened as a team to um, 
you know, to keep the recommendations and have that evaluation. Okay. I guess I was thinking more in terms of the budget discussion in advance, because I think that one has to take priority, correct, Enrique? Yeah, it could be it could be good to have uh, a discussion, a general discussion of, you know, the assumptions we had when we started this process, uh, which includes, you know, a, a good healthy level of funding, but then what um, what this year has done and not done in terms of, you know, uh, funding for that fund. All right, I think, and then I know that we're gonna get some of that, Joe, in the update uh, next week. So yep. let's plan on the 18th and 25th, and if it just becomes too much, we'll just move it down a little bit further, understanding that you would ideally like to finish up by the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Okay, good. So uh, our next Thursday, um, if we were to continue our regular cadence, Marianne, it's a July date, really. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, May 27th is the next agenda setting, and then June 4th would be commission meeting, June 10th agenda, June 18th commission meeting, June 25th is a special, July 2nd would be the next commission meeting, and July 8th agenda setting. July 16th commission, July 22nd agenda setting, and July 30th a commission meeting. Let's proceed with the idea of July 2nd um, and, and see what happens if that becomes a potential, at what date? That's a Thursday. So that's a July 4th weekend. Right. Do, you, do people want to skip that July? I know right now it's hard to imagine any plans. So it's hard to even conceptualize that we would be, oh, I'm going to be at, you know, family or friends somewhere in the, celebrating the 4th. I'm usually not available then, but given the circumstances and that it's likely virtual, I think we can keep it on. Do we, now want to, do, do we want to keep it now? Let's um, let's keep it on now, but also let's remember we can give ourselves a break if we decide that that's an, uh, the right time to give a break. Maybe mm -hmm. the weather will even improve. So, alrighty, I'm good with that as long as everybody else. I'm not seeing anyone going. Okay, I think it's fine as well. Uh, it's as you said, it's hard to imagine um, social gatherings. I I know I know. Okay. Um, so now looking, is there any item that, uh, that anyone attending or somebody who's speaking for someone who's not attending needs to put on, on any of the dates that Marianne went through up through the 20, through the 18th? Well, Madam Chair, I do, there is one item I, I'd like to bring to everyone's attention that I think will require some attention, um, in the near future, and that is the expiration of the gaming license uh, for the operation of Plain Ridge Park yeah. Casino. Uh, the expiration date is set for June 24th. Um, I know uh, Joe and Loretta and team have been looking at some of the documents that have been submitted. Um, it's obviously, a, there are exceptional circumstances at the moment, um, but um, I think some action will have to be taken by the commission in advance of that June 24th date. Um, so I think putting... I, yeah, yeah, I guess that we haven't... Uh, do we not have that on the agenda setting the notes at all? I didn't see it. Aaron, um, yeah, we could put the renewal as, a, as, a, as an agenda item and put that on, yeah, under review because the... Um, I, I want to make sure we're not presuming a continuance. You know what I mean? Um, that may be your recommendation, but if that's your recommendation, we should probably put that up sooner on our agenda than Yeah, that's a good later. idea. Yeah. It's if, not, if yeah. I'm not saying, you know, one way or another how the commit my fellow commissioners or I will feel about that, but um, that has somehow not made it on our notes and that it certainly has been work I've been aware of. Yeah. Um, and we've all been aware of, but I don't want it to be presumed that there's going to be 
you know, no options for us but a continuance. So, Loretta, are you on the on the call right now? Yes, I am. Good morning. Uh, do you have a thought on timing on that or a suggestion? I think it could be a, um, a brief status update, uh, possibly as early uh, as the 21st. I, I'd want to loop Joe into that. Uh, we um, have some updates that uh, he has been in touch with the licensee about. Uh, if those are forthcoming, uh, we'd be in a very good position for that for that update. Um, uh, I mean, frankly, regardless, we could give you the update on the twenty first. Right. I think it, I think it's just fair to say where you are. You know, we were getting regular updates, and of course, we did understand the the approach you're taking. Questions for Loretta on this? Others? Gail, Bruce, Eileen, Enrique. What yeah. You, the, the only question I had was. Um, my memory is once the application is in, that the license continues. That, that's exactly the right. Is pending. So this is a question of whether they could file the application in time. Well, that's exactly right. So, the, um, uh, so the, there are two aspects of the application. Uh, one is the suitability aspects of the application. Uh, and those were, we're all set on those and we are well along um, uh, on the suitability part of the renewal. Uh, on the additional aspects of their submission, their, we, we want to make sure that all of those uh, holes have been filled, and we are still working on that. Okay. Yeah, so we've got, we've got, um, we've got a, a, a tranche of information from uh, PPC that we've been going through and there are still some holes in that data and that information that we asked for. So I actually have a call this afternoon with uh, Lisa McKenney to go over what those holes are and when we can expect that. I mean, there are certainly circumstances here where there some of the people who need to sign off on these things aren't working, uh, have been furloughed. So, um, you know, the hope is that we can get all of the necessary sign-offs, or even if we can't get all the sign-offs, we can at least get the information to us. I would say right now, what they have submitted to us with their application, there are probably maybe more holes in it than we could say that it's complete as of today. Um, or so we'll see that conversation this afternoon and see when we can when we can get that data. And uh, just to follow up on that, Commissioner O'Brien and, and the commissioners, the actual statute says, it's chapter 38, section 13, that an applicant has to make timely and sufficient application for renewal. So there is discretion baked in as to what timely and sufficient is, and that's really, I think, what the commission is going to have to consider, is whether well, that's doesn't been- Doesn't it, under the statute, that is timely? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. As to whether the current circumstances might redefine timely. Yeah, I, I think the commission is fully within its discretion to determine what timely and sufficient is. But once you find- does, um, Todd, does it expire under the statute after five, uh, five years? Is, the, is it a license? So do you- I, I believe that's the date, June 24th. Yeah. So probably timely was intended to be on time. Oh, uh, yeah, right, right, right. So we just want to make sure whatever we can do, we address properly. It sounds like we're going to get a good update, right, um, next week. I think we should make time for that. Yeah, definitely. What do you think, Gail? Yeah, I think we have to make time for that. And I just had a question of Joe. Um, when you say holes, are you anticipating that they can be filled in a sufficient manner? Yeah, I think so. You know, when we did that so-called midterm review, we s received a lot of this information, but the problem is that information's a year old. So many of these things, you know, just as an example, they went through all of their Section 61 findings and wrote out a document on how they were in compliance with them. But there were still a couple of things that they were still working on. I remember the bus line they were trying to do, um, which I think still needs to be done. But Regardless, they need to say, all right, 
that's one of the items that we have on our list is the Section 61 finding. So they need to go back to that document, tell us whether it's still accurate today. That just hasn't been done yet. So I think most of the information is there in some fashion or another with from that midterm review and from what they've submitted to us uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it can all be pulled together in you know, hopefully within within a couple of weeks to get us something that that we can say yes, this is a sufficient application. Okay. Because uh, Todd, did you say the standard is timely and what was the substantial? Sufficient. 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 Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Gail. So I think that's probably where, if it's substantially complete, particularly given these circumstances, if we can be accommodating, but. Let's get the update next week. Thank you, Todd, for bringing that to our attention. That's sure. important. Okay, is there anything else from anyone that should be on a, a date that is now in our in our calendar? Really, either the twenty first, the fourth. So the, just said, just said um, that we're uh, we're all clear that there will be then an update on the fourth or the eighteenth for the PPC. Twenty um, first, I think, next week. Oh, May 21st. So, we'll have, so that will be, we'll have the short update on community mitigation, we'll have an update on the license, and then we'll proceed with the independent monitors report. And I think that okay. will be- Okay, as, as early as next week, okay. I think that's a okay. good length meeting, don't you think? Yeah, 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 no, I thought we were talking about the ones in June. I'm like, no, there's, I no, think, there's no meeting think, in, on the 21st in June. <laughs> Do you think, um, and I think it's better to get just the update earlier than later, that gives us more opportunity to chew on it. Sounds good. A good month. Okay, excellent. Okay, then we're gonna look at, if there's no other items, I can't see faces, so I'd, I'm assuming we're good. Okay, then moving on to the um, items under review, starting with Jill, number 12, Workforce Development Grant Update. Um, this can um, just be uh, listed as pending. It will likely be uh, late summer or fall. Okay, point. so we'll keep it under review. Thank yep. you. Alex? So um, items 13 through 16 can stay under review until um, we have a firm um, sense of when live racing at Plain Ridge will start. Excellent, thank you. Item number 17, that's um, Mark and uh, Elaine and Teresa. Oh. I don't see Mark, Elaine, I see you. Good morning. Oh, you're still muted, Elaine. Uh, Good morning. Uh, we're making a lot of progress um, on this. Oh, I see Mark right there. Um, we're making a lot of progress. Um, I, we still don't have a delivery date on it, but it's going really well. Good. So we'll just keep it under review and, and yeah. okay, excellent. Thank you. Mark, did you want to add in now? No, that's, that's just fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Item, and then Mark, you're back on item number 18 on the data storage and access report. Do you want to keep that under review still? Yeah, let's keep that under review. And then 19 as well? Uh, yes, please. Okay, and then we have the template um, work that's underway. Jill, do you, um, is that continuing to be under review or do you want to bring it up? Remember, we have July 2nd as well. Um, for now, still under review. Okay, excellent. Karen, number 21. Just keep that under review, please. Okay, Commissioner Zuniga. Uh, same thing, uh, keep it on the review. I need to coordinate with a, a, a staff member on this issue. Okay, great. Is there any work that's being done now in addition to all these items that you know any member of the team anticipates needing some guidance from the commission, whether it's formal guidance or a vote? So that anything that comes to mind so that we don't lose track. Okay, 
Karen, I think you're all set then. Yeah, I'm just checking the list here. I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me, but if uh, if I come up with it, I'll add it to the list through Marianne. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions for everyone on anything? No, Gail? All set? Shara, thank you. Uh, then I guess I need a motion. So first I should say this. Thanks, everyone. Motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zunica. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I say yes. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.